Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Defend Your Picks, the show where we all learn from your picks at your local game store. Today, we've got a special one. We've got our pre-release draft for Amon Ket, and I'm joined today by Chifley Cole, the host of This Machine Kills Net Deckers. G'day. You should go check it out, it's great. Um, it's medium. <laughs> He underrates it. Um, so we're going to go through uh, all of Chifley's picks today and uh, he'll tell us why he picked things and uh, hopefully we all learn something from that. Yeah. So how did it go, Chifley? Uh, I thought my deck was really good at the end um, and I kind of was on track from the entire process of the draft. So uh, there was a lot of picks where I wasn't sure what I should take, but it was often taking between two cards that both would have been fine in my deck, not ones where I would have to abandon picks or whatever. Okay, so we've got straight away, we've first up, we've got a god right at the front. What do you think of Kefnet? I, I suspect it's not very good um, because it's basically just an enchantment. It's really hard to actually start attacking with it. Um, I kind of wanted to try a really big, slow, perhaps blue-black deck where yep. I uh, tried to finish with it, but I, I chickened out and I took a, a card that I knew was definitely good. So Stir the Sands would still go in that deck though, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like Stir the Sands is definitely good. Like, I'm never going to regret picking Stir the Sands and putting it in my deck. Whereas if I take that god and it turns out not to be as good as I wanted, then I'm going to feel like I've wasted a pick. So a little bit down the road, you might think that's the wrong pick? If, if it yeah, turns yeah, out. exactly. So it's more of an exploratory pick because we haven't, we've only done one or two drafts of this format. Yeah, well, like if I was actually exploring the format uh, instead of just trying to win, um, I, I might have risked the... The god. You would have got rewarded with new perspective straight up, straight yeah, afterwards. Yeah, I was I, when I saw that I was like, oh no, I could have been doing it. <laughs> but this this pack has the uh, the uncommon that I really like, the one two. Um, it just makes combat so hard for your opponent. The ruthless sniper. Yeah, yeah. Like they can't block your creatures, and then you don't cycle, and then you develop your board, or even hold banner up during their turn, and then they can't attack you, and then at the end, end of their turn, I just do it again. I, I cycle, I shrink something. Um, I think it's incredible. So you weren't even thinking about the af- aftermath card there. Uh, it was a gold one, wasn't it? I've already yeah, forgotten what white, it was. Red and white. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. I, I didn't think you would be. You want a violent impact? I hear that's pretty dumb. Um, sensor. Yeah, sensor is see, a, would have put you right in that blue deck. Would have been perfect. Yeah, the cards just kept on coming. Or I probably would have uh, considered taking the hieroglyphs over the sensor. I think it's yep. close. Um, I think sensor's probably a little bit better. But I'm also happy with the uncommon I've flicked to the front here, the Amet. Uh, I think when I put a counter onto something small and I have a 4-3 lifelink, that, that can win races by itself. Um, and it's never bad even when the counter goes on itself. So yeah, stay on colour. Yeah, so you're pushing directly into one colour here. There's no um, no moving around yet. Um, do you, how, how much do you value staying in one colour? Uh, I'm probably a pretty conservative drafter, so I tend to stick to my color if I can. Um, I'm not just going to... Because there's a lot of variance, uh, particularly in a new draft, in terms of the cards you see. It doesn't yes. necessarily mean something's open. It might just mean people are evaluating things differently. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll try to stick to my color where I know I've got playables. And again, here there's a, an excellent blue card that would have been great for the hypothetical deck I don't have. <laughs> yes. But there's also this aftermath card that I think is really, really good. Start I think, to finish. Yeah. I think that the clean like unconditional removal on the back half is worth picking up a second color for. Yeah. It's um, it's also quite cheap, really. Yeah. Especially compared to some of the other aftermath cards, which are, you know, six mana on the on the second side. It's pretty cheap for a three mana. Yeah, so... Yeah, like you can just play it on turn three and then on turn four you can kill a four drop and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so you've got uh, an Evolving Wilds, a By Force was in there too, a Serpent going if you if you're in the blue. Uh, every time I see one of those cards, I feel <laughs> I feel like a little pain, but I also really like that Cycler there. Yeah, um, it's great early game when I need a land drop or I just you know need something to play on turn two and I don't, I can cycle it on turn one. And late game, it makes it really hard for your opponent to block. Yeah, so big big bodies that have it and alternate a cycling cost are just always better than they look, right? Yeah, and it plays really well with the uh, Ruthless Sniper that I picked up because mm-hmm. it's got a cycle on itself to trigger the Sniper, but also if I'm picking up other cyclers to feed my Sniper, then they're going to feed the Horror of the Broken Land oh. that I picked up. It's really hard to do card names when we've had the cards in our hands for like two days. <laughs> yeah, that's why we definitely don't have them all sitting in front of us, everyone. Yeah, we've broken <laughs> the fourth wall. 
Um, but I think I think it's a very good start to a draft. Uh, mm-hmm. I was happy so far, and hopefully that continues. And he've got another black card on the front, Wonder and Death. Uh, Jewel Land, it's not going to be very good for you. A Lizard, that Lizard's quite good, but I don't think it's you're anywhere near it yet. Yeah, I, honestly, uh, if the fan better weren't in that pack, uh, I might have taken the Double Raised Dead, but I may just have taken that Dual Land. I really like the Cycling Lands, even if I only have one of the colours. Ah, yes. So you would definitely, would you always play the Cycling Lands? Uh, not in a, a really aggressive deck. I mm-hmm. think where coming to play tap would actually hurt me, but in a deck like this is panning out to be, I think it's really, really good to have a land that cycles in addition to spells that cycle. What do you th- what do you think about how in sealed? Would you just always play them in sealed? Um, I think so. Yeah, mm. I think so. Unless I end up in a, again a bad aggro deck in sealed. <laughs> yeah. Um, this pack is weak. Uh, I like the fan bearer from the previous pack, um, but here I'm just going to pick up some totally dorky. Some guys. There was also Bontu's monument in the back there. What do you think of that? Uh, now that's the black monument. That is the black one. Uh, that's the. The worst of a bunch of bad monuments. Uh, like it yeah. drains them for one, right? And, and you get to, you get your black uh, creatures cheaper. Yeah, I, I like the white monument. I actually lost to it uh, on the weekend. Mm. But uh, the other ones, maybe the green one's okay. But uh, red and blue and black, I'm not interested in at all. Yeah. Yeah, I found the green one to be pretty exceptional, actually. Yeah? Just as long as you can just pumping out creatures, they're just always bigger than your opponents. That's right. Like the trample uh, is very relevant. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of embalmed creatures, like giving you the double chomp lock, getting around that is really good. Um, so I picked up a sacred cat, uh, which is a fine one drop if I need a one drop. Um, and and here, nothing, nothing yeah, much else for you here, really. Pack, picks are starting to dry down. I might play the the desert. Turn a, turn a land slot into a spell. Yeah, in some ways it's kind of like the cycler. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it's lower impact and hurts my mana base more, more than a, a white green cycler would have. But I'm still happy to pick it up. Um, Unburden has cycling on it. Supply you, caravan's a good. I don't like, really a like, creature. I played supply caravan caravan on the weekend and and it didn't really do much for me. I actually found sometimes it was hard in a defensive deck to get a tapped creature when I wanted the extra one one. Okay. Whereas unburden, uh, I will happily play multiple copies of at times. It's almost the perfect card to have cycling on because mm-hmm. um, a mind road is so bad off the top late game. Mm-hmm. But there's times when it's incredible. Um, and again, the the double raised dead, I also really like. Yeah, uh, for, and it's, for similar reasons. It's good to pick up one of those at some point. Yeah. No, you just got another dorky guy there yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, another dorky guy. Combat trick I might play. Uh, but again, like, the, every cycler I pick up makes the Ruthless Sniper better and any of the horrors that I get and play just get better. All right, so in a perfect world, of all the things you can remember in the set, what would be the, the card that you open in the next pack? Uh, probably the White God. No, maybe no the angel thing that the double the O-ring angel yeah the O-ring double angel O-ring. that embalms the thing that's like literally unbeatable right <laughs> yeah I think that's a pretty good choice <laughs> but I think this deck looks like pretty good coming out of pack one um, I got solid creatures I've got a good removal spell I've got a tapper I've got plenty of cyclers I I don't think I'll ever be unhappy with a deck full of cyclers <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so. We're just looking through your picks now. Um, what's a more realistic pick for your second pack rather than the ultimate angel? Something like five mana instant exile a creature, that black mm-hmm. black common removal yeah. spell, or maybe an, another cycler that works well, another ruthless sniper, or... Well, here we go. We'll see We're what going. I get. Hold your breath, everyone. I think I get something pretty good from this pack, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Scorpions uh, are reasonable. I like, I like the scorpion a lot, actually. Once I've already picked up one of the... Grave Digger? I like Grave Digger even more. Uh, I thought about Oracle's that. Oracle's Vault. That would have been really good in my blue deck. Yes. But yeah, and I, I think the scorpion goes up a little bit once I've got one of the double raised deads already. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still think Grave Digger's better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, ideally, I'd like to be able to pick up the Grave Digger and still have a Scorpion or two in my deck, um, because then the Grave Digger can get back the Scorpion. But Grave Digger just—it's so, such a good value. Okay, so it's it's cl- how close though? How how close are we talking here? Uh, I was pretty close here. Like, I think if if Grave Digger were a common and the Scorpion were an uncommon, then I'd be taking the uncommon one because I kind of mm-hmm. want to mix. I don't want to overload too much on one or the other. That's how close it was, I guess. That's okay. a way to describe it. All right, Grave Digger gets in. I'm Let's... very pleased with the Grave Digger. <laughs> Let's see what else. Uh, I think Jewelist. maybe this pick, I get a very good card. Lay Bear the Heart, a 
beautiful shiny island. Soul Stinger. A bear. Yeah, nothing good for my blue deck. Cartouche. Oh, did I really take a cartouche here? That's underwhelming. I have no trials yet, and the white trial isn't good. Um, I think this black cartouche is quite good, and I'm happy to play it with no trials, but I don't think it's a super high-impact card. So you, it looks like you're taking a long time to think about this decision. Is it? Is it actually close? I think so. Like, the Trial Duelist is a, a really consistent... Like, it, it curves out really well. Mm -hmm. um, it lets you chomp really well late in the game. The reason I took the uh, the enchantment there is because I already had the double raised dead and the grave digger, and so the embalm value on the two drop there isn't as high as it otherwise would be, yep. and that pushed me towards the cartouche. Uh, and here I get the scorpion that I wanted all along, so that's good. I considered this cartouche. cartouche as well. I think if I'd had a black trial, I would have picked up the white cartouche here. What about the soul stinger at the back? I don't rate that card. Okay. Uh, I think. It's just, it's a little bit too easy for your opponent to see where it's going to put the counters and you don't get enough value for the mana. Um, oh, there's a, a seven mana monster. Yeah, an angel that I just quickly shuffled the back and <laughs> moved on from. I uh, saw many, many of those in the pre-release sealed. Yeah? Yeah, everybody in this, every second person seemed to be playing one. But... Yeah, I just don't, I don't want to play it because it doesn't have cycling and yeah. I could put something big and expensive on my deck that has cycling and every time I draw it, I'm happy and... If I put that in my deck and I've only got three lands or four lands or five lands, I'm going to hate myself. So. Yeah. Uh, and the second Scorpion's really good as well, I think. Yeah. So your your current plan is play a Scorpion, recur your Scorpions, just kill all their stuff with yeah. Scorpions. My, my plan is pray they don't have any Flyers, yeah. and then I'll just trade off Death Toucher after Death Toucher after Death Toucher. <laughs> all right. How do you win, though? You've got to find a way to win. Just play the, the zombie card, the stir the... stir the sands, is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, I'll just make three two twos. <laughs> How could I lose? <laughs> Three two twos. Unbeatable. I think that card's very good. It's a festering mummy there and a sacred cat. A couple of one ones. Yeah, a couple of bad one drops that I'm not that excited about. Perhaps I should have taken the white cartouche here instead, just to keep my options open if I if I did see a black trial. I've noticed the black trial seems not to be as highly rated as some of the other ones. But oh, I that's think interesting. Well, I played against it and the first time they cast it, I was like, Yeah, it's whatever, it's an edict. Yeah. But then they got it back once, I was like, This is incredible. Yeah. Like, how am I ever winning? <laughs> So, like, I'm, I'm pretty high on the black trial now. So it's possible I should have taken the white cartouche because I'm almost never going to play whichever one drop I take in that spot. I've already got a Sacred Cat. I've already got a Fan Bearer. already got a Ruthless Sniper. I'm just not interested in more one drops. All right. So now you've got a combat trick you're going with? Yeah, I actually really like this combat trick. I think it's close to plus two, plus zero, and indestructible. Like yes. It's not quite that good. But it's one mana, gives you two power to trade up, and it saves your guy... And you can use it out of combat versus removal. Obviously, it's not good on my embalm tokens and against some of the removal in the set, but I think it's a, it's a very good combat trick. There was also a pyramid in that pack. Do you? I've what played, do you think of the pyramid? I've played the pyramid in a draft. I think if you have enough high end and enough X spells, you could play it, but I didn't really like it. I was using it to splash, and it was okay. Yeah. All right. And then I picked up my second uh, horror, horror, which again, I really like. Um, I'm not sure how many I'd have to have before I stop putting them in my deck. Well, they're all cycling black, right? So they yeah, just keep working with each other. Exactly. They make each other better. Um, cycling for one black is almost free. Yeah. Not quite, but almost. It's pretty close. The fact the fact that they feed off each other is, you know... I, yeah. don't, I don't think... If I had five, I still think I'd play five. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I think... It's a difference they have with some of the other cycler like enabled cards. Mm -hmm. So I really like it. Uh, here, it's got to be fan drop. bearer, right? Yeah. Well, I'm a little hesitant to put the second fan bearer in my deck. Really? Because when you when you draw the second one, it's bad. It's a bad card, right? Yeah, but I mean, you're, you're almost never going to be activating two in one turn. If you if you get if it's all stalled out, having two of them is amazing. Yeah, yeah, but like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so anyway, I took it and I did play it in the end. And okay. occasionally I did draw the second one. Here, I could have taken the second double raise dead, but I expected myself not to want to play a second copy of it and want to have access to post-board the cycling disenchant. Yes. So that's why I took that there. That might have been a mistake because it might be the case that you always want to main deck the double raise dead. Yeah, but you might. I, I would argue that you would always want to main deck one of those disenchants too I thought about it in the end I left it in the sideboard uh, had a lot of playables and I don't think there's that much that you actually want to get in draft it's 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 cartouches and trials that you're getting primarily right and then there's a pacifism yeah and 
I mean, there's a couple of the brick counter things, like yeah. the the one that the stops something from attacking. <laughs> yes. And that's a really good card. It's only uncommon, and that's the kind of card that you really would want to exile. Um, or kill in any way you yeah. could. Yeah. But that's the kind of card I'd be happy to ha- see them play when I had it main deck. But I just don't think that's going to happen often enough that I would play it over a card such as Unburden or Raised mm-hmm. Dead. Um, so I rounded the, the pack out with a couple of cyclers that I might play or give me sideboard options. So the the path of this draft has been quite clear. You, uh, Despite the little little blue thing at the start, it's been black-white all the way. Um, you've played two or three drafts. Has that been your same, is the same in all of those drafts? No, no. I, I did lose to a black-white deck, so that might be like colouring why I, I lean towards it this time. But no, I've done a, a really big, slow, black, blue, splash red deck that, that worked really well. Um, this is the first time I've tried this strategy with the cyclers. Um, part of the problem I had, what I found really difficult is because it's so new in the format, I don't actually know what the good cards are. When I'm mm-hmm. looking at two cards that are close together, it's really tough to make the decision. Well, that's the fun of draft, right? <laughs> it is, it is. Also, the games are like the best magic you get, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> limited magic is why I play magic. Oh, we all agree, I, I'm sure. <laughs> if only there was some website for Draftaholics. Oh, I'll pay you later for that. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here's an. Oh, yellow. Never. Never with a relevant backside. Actually, <laughs> I thought it never would be. Uh, pun unintended. But uh, I actually exiled like three or four unbound creatures over the course of the draft. Oh wow! With the back half, um, actually gained life off my anointed priest, making the token once or twice. Uh-huh. Um, but obviously, it's an unconditional removal in a set where removal seems to be a little scarcer than we're used to. Um, so I'm never going to pass yeah. that when it's in my colours. I want to argue with you, but I can't. Wing Shepherd is pretty good. Yeah, I like Wing Shepherd a lot. I also really like this card that I'm putting to the front now. The Vizier? Yeah. It, I've already got enough cyclers that I feel like uh, it's going to threaten to be indestructible every time I attack with it. It's also an Attendant. Yep, which I think is even better. And then another Cycling Land. So yeah. you've got a, a whole lot of choices you could take I do, here. I do. Um, I, take, I think this card is just so good. Yeah. It's so flexible. Like, if I'm, like, game, a pair of 3-3 flyers is so huge. Having both cycling and embalm yeah, is exactly. pretty big. It, it does it all, right? Yeah. Um, and it gives me a flyer in a deck where it looks like I might be a little weak to flyers. Mm-hmm. So that shores up a weakness as well. So I think that was the pick there. Although I could easily see myself picking the Vizier or even the land in a, in a different universe. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we've got a few, a few bears, a Gust Walker and a True, true Heart Duelist. Yeah, I I decided again, and this is because of the same reason I passed on the True Heart earlier, with the Raised Dead and the Grave Digger, the Embalm is less valuable to me, and picking up a Flyer mm-hmm. is something I'm interested in. I really like the Gust Worker as an on-curve drop that late game can actually impact, rather than just being a dorky tutu. Yeah, you can, if it all stalls out, you can fly over the top. And here I think I get the Winged Shepherd that I was looking at earlier. I really like having one of these in my deck. I don't like having too many. Um, I don't think it's as good as the horror is. They're quite expensive. Exactly. Six exactly. mana. And it's a little bit, like, you get a little less value for the six mana you pay than you do for the horror. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still really nice. It's another flyer that could help me late game. Horror. Here he yep. is again. Number three. I will, uh, I don't quite get to the five that we discussed, <laughs> but I do get a third one. Another um, wander in death. Yeah, again, maybe I should another have picked up. Picked up a second wonder, but I think this card is just really no. good. As we previously discussed, I think having all those horrors is fine and good. I think you want that many. Yeah, I think it will just win games. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see myself picking it highly for the foreseeable future. All right. So your curve now, it's it's looking a bit skewed to the top with all those horrors, though. That's the one problem that yeah, they but, can... But they don't... I mean, I'm not really, like, stuck playing them on turn five. Yeah. They do cycle, and with the Wandering Death and the Grave Digger that I keep coming back to, if I'm relying them on like, relying on them as my late-game options, but I'm cycling them early, I can still get them back and play them, so they're not unavailable to me if I, if I cycle. I think this pick, I may have made a mistake in hindsight. Ah, the Lord. Well, it's really hard to say. Like, I have the Stir of the Sands. I have the back half of the... The Aftermath card makes a zombie. I have the Fan Bearers as zombies. I have the Anointed Priest can be a zombie. But the Splendid Agony is a removal spell. 
It's not a great removal spell, but it is a removal spell. I could point it at flyers. It's a pretty flexible removal spell. Exactly. It's a combat trick and a removal spell, but I, I was enticed by the upside of paying six mana and getting three three threes and then giving them menace. Yeah, I can see people saying you should just take a removal spell when it's available, right? But the tribal synergies. And look, <laughs> I get rewarded with a zombie in the very next pack. Uh... Multiple zombies. My pick of zombies. No, I think in hindsight, after... After the game's played out, and you can see there I pass on the third fan bearer. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hesitant on the second one, and I ruled out the third one immediately. And because now you, ha- because you have the zombie lord now, I think you're you're, you're priced into taking the yeah, other yeah. zombies, right? Of course, I ended up not playing the three two menace. Oh, uh, what? I know what a waste. <laughs> Another cartouche. Yeah, and again, this it's kind of similar to the the combat trick. Or... Grim Strider. Yeah, I don't know how good that would have been in my deck. I've got a lot of cyclers. I feel like I'm going to hold up mana for the cyclers a lot. With the fan bearer, I might be slower to develop my board. And so Maybe I, on I, don't, I think I would have taken the uh, taken the strider there. It's if when you get it down later in the game, it's it's huge. It's, yeah, it's yeah. so much bigger than everything else. I can see that for sure. Um, yeah, let's say that was wrong. I'm happy to say <laughs> that was wrong. I haven't played with the card yet. Like uh, I'm a little leery of it because sometimes it's bad. But I think it's it, it's probably easier than I thought at the time to make into a good card. Yeah, and I should have just taken it. Yeah. And there I just took another combat trick that cycles that, that I probably won't play. I'm super glad to see this come back. The Vizier. Yeah, I got one of those. I was hoping to get more, to be honest. Um, I didn't see that many throughout the draft. So when you play the Vizier, it's, it's just all the threat, right? You're attacking with it, they just can't block. Exactly. Like, if they block, and then I cycle a card, they're so far behind. So they take four. Hmm. And then I, I just develop my board. I don't cycle. I don't give it indestructible. Yeah. And then the next time I do the same thing, it puts your opponent in a really hard spot. So they're, they're forced to throw something under it eventually. It's just when they choose to do that. Yeah, so I would have liked to have had a second one of them, but uh, I didn't, so yep. that's fine. Um, I actually kind of like that equipment a little bit. I already had one copy and I ended up not playing it, but I think uh, it's about as efficient as you can get for a piece of equipment. Um, and I could see myself playing it a lot in, mm-hmm. in decks where I didn't have quite the wealth of playables that I yeah. did here. I really struggled to build this deck. All right, we're going to flip through them now and have a look. There's a few horrors. There's your Stir the Sands and a Grave Digger. Scorpions, Amet, those priests. I think those, did those priests make the cut? One of them made the cut uh, just because I wanted a second two drop uh, to go alongside with the Gust Walker. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot of options. I could have played the Beetle instead to get the extra point of toughness, giving up on the life gain and the Embalm. But I thought that like whatever two drop I played in that slot would end up chump blocking a bunch. So, yeah. All right, so everyone, you can now see Chifley's final build in the uh, on the screen now. Um, so, how if you had to rate this deck, what would you give it out of ten? Ooh, that's really tough. It's so hard early in the format. Maybe, maybe about a six. Okay. It doesn't really have any bombs. Like I'm, I'm trying to get there with creatures, mostly on the ground, and they're pretty fair creatures. I'm not doing anything busted mm-hmm. you know so i've got a couple of premium removal spells in the pair of aftermath cards um so it's definitely a strong deck but i think that my my inability to like really overpower anybody means i can't really give this like a seven or an eight or, or higher um maybe though i also think the synergy's a little bit mixed up um i don't have enough rewards for the cyclers early on i would have liked maybe to be blue and have the enchantment that's really good at rare or a second ruthless sniper to, to really call this like like a high powered deck. Yeah, to really really punish your opponents. Yeah, I also think I shouldn't have played both cartouches that I ended up playing. Um, in high, I thought looking at this deck that I was weak to flyers, and I thought the cartouches life link would give me outs to race them, mm-hmm. where I can't block them in the air, so I need a way to either gain life or punch through damage. So you put it on a horror and just attack just for the life? Yeah, exactly. I put it on, like, even just on a 4-4, but ideally, yeah, on a horror, and, and then I can race a flyer. But it's a bit too slow, and it's a bit too low impact when that's not happening. I think I should have cut one of those and played any one of, you know, a handful of sideboard cards that could have been better. Maybe uh, another 2-drop, or even the equipment. Just Yeah. Yeah. Or, or the disenchant that we talked about. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that happening. All what right. do you think of this deck? Yeah. Oh, I think I think it's pretty good. the 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 problem that it has is flyers. That's when I look at it, I instantly think that flyers. Yeah, I mean, I've got the two fan bearers, but like when, when they're playing a deck with flyers, they end up playing multiple flyers, and if I'm tapping something with a fan bearer, I, I'm slowing the game down, and they're just plinking away. So yeah, flyers are the weakness. So, what was your what was your record? Now that we've gone through it. 
Uh, How did you go in the actual? Well, I went two one, but I lost the first round, so it's not a strong two one. It's yeah. a weak two one. So yeah, but I went two one, um, and I lost the flyers in in the round I lost. All right, so prediction, you know, confirmed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks truthfully for going through your your draft with us today. It was it was interesting. I hope everyone's learnt something about Amonkhet drafting. Um, that's what we want to do here. We want to make sure that uh, everyone gets a little bit better at magic and. Uh, so everyone's playing. Um, where can we find you, Chif- Chifley? Uh, so I have a podcast uh, with Valen Cameron, who hopefully will be on the show someday if he, if he can make it. Uh, that can be found on gasmtg.com up here, <laughs> where I also write the occasional article. Uh, very serious, I assure you. <laughs> yeah, they're the most serious website you've ever seen. Um, if, you want to get, if you would like to be part of Defend Your Picks... Um, just get in touch with us. Go to the website. Go give. Go to the feedback form. Send us an email. Send us an email. Contact us on Twitter. We are draft um, at Draftaholics MTG. You can find us on Facebook if you want as well. Um, go check out our event finder and our Pack One Pick One tool. It'll help you with drafting. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.